1875, we see Manet traveling to Venice. Uh, this is a very popular location uh, for the Impressionists, and, and again, uh, the people associated around the Impressionists. If you think about all of the water uh, that's present in Venice, and again, uh, the atmosphere that is created there, uh, it's very, very um, conducive, if you will to the Impressionist style of work. Again, uh, I mentioned this in a previous lecture, the, the, the water is something that we see again and again painted by the Impressionist uh, in this style because you can very much uh, take the water and, and use it as a, a medium by which you can represent uh, a wide range of colors and, and also that kind of slap uh, dash paintbrush method like we can see here uh, where you can see the visible brush strokes uh, this works very well with water. I mean, again, if you think about the surface of water reflecting light and how it kind of goes in and out depending on the planes uh, uh, on the surface of the water itself, uh, again, this will be very conducive to this. And again, we also have a tremendous amount of light uh, reflecting off the water. So as we view this and we kind of view this transformation occurring uh, within Manet, we see him moving uh, again. If we go back to our, our first series of lectures, this is concentrating more on realism. Uh, and when we look at a painting like this, uh, we can see he's really moving away. And, and this is even uh, true when we look into his interiors again. The majority of the early work we have by Manet uh, is, is something that you would see from in, in the interior of a space. And uh, as we return to this idea of the interior of the space, uh, we'll notice that he's kind of changed things. He's, he's going again uh, from more of this Impressionist style that he's kind of absorbed uh, for his time when he was working with Claude Monet in the Argente region, uh, again, is, this kind of does carry forward into his work. And as we continue uh, to see his evolution, uh, he really kind of brings in aspects of this uh, back into his work. He kind of focuses uh, a little bit more towards realism uh, concentrating back towards that direction but again uh, when we look at things like Madame uh, Manet painted from 1874 to uh, 76 again uh, this almost is, is uh, I imagine a study we have this clear resolve this clear uh, uh, resolution of, 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 of what this woman's face looks like but again as we move farther and farther away uh, from the composition we see less and less uh, aspects of reality and more uh, almost of a, a, a formal study uh, of, of shape if you will leading into her shoulders and just a little bit of a hint uh, of what's occurring in the background. Again, uh, I, this wonderful painting of a dog that I love so much, uh, it's always good to include at least one dog painting in every art lecture. Uh, but again, when we look at the, the, the brushstroke work, this is a, a perfect subject matter uh, for this type of, of uh, uh, work again it's it's even a little bit flattened and you see these two wonderful eyes and this black nose kind of popping their way through uh the the, the fuzzy exterior of the dog you can almost reach your hands into the painting and and caress it with its active breaststroke. So again, uh, long story short, to kind of bring everything into to one conversation, uh, we see him kind of using this earlier style, but it really is uh, centered more on aspects of background, where as we move uh, uh, forward here and we see more of the portraiture work that he's doing in 1876, etc., uh, we do see more uh, of this kind of looser style reincorporated back into his work. We know, of course, he does return to Paris uh, after his time in Venice, and he very much kind of returns to a lot of similar subject matter uh, that we've seen before in terms of portraiture of interiors, uh, this type of, of, of device, but we also see him uh, re-examining the city itself in a profound way, uh, and examining modern life again, very much like he did uh, in the earlier part of his career. Uh, again, Woman Before a Mirror is a, is a wonderful example of this new style where, again, you can almost see the, the hand of the artist creating the individual brushstrokes uh, on the canvas itself. And, and again, the woman almost seems muting into uh, the mirror where uh, it's very hard to see, especially on the left side, where the image of her 
uh, uh, ends and where the actual woman begins. And then as we kind of move our way through the background, we can see he's almost just pushing the brush directly onto the canvas to create these splotches uh, to form a background. Again, uh, uh, using the idea that the eye is fusing together in some ways uh, all of these different distinct elements. This is uh, two different versions of the, of just one painting. I do this sometimes because uh, in, in some instances we get the color better in one uh, and the image better in the second one, and this would be a great example of this. But uh, from this and a little bit earlier, Manet paints the cafe life of Paris uh, uh, quite a bit. And again, uh, this is this local cafe uh, that we see him at quite a, uh, uh, quite a few times. But uh, this is just this view into, again, the everyday life of these people, uh, as you would see it, uh, the everyday life of Parisians. And again, uh, the cafe is an important part of the social structure, especially uh, for the artistic social structure. We see several versions of the beer maid, and again, this this woman who, uh, in some ways, actually reminds me of his is uh, in, in appearance his wife Suzanne. Uh, I often wonder if he kind of started with sketches of her, the beer maid, and then kind of finished with his wife as a as a model. But uh, again this kind of local character just serving alcohol. But when we look at this in comparison, again, uh, uh, to how he was formulating the, the modern idea of Paris before, uh, things have kind of changed, where if we think of paintings like uh, Olympia or even uh, a Luncheon on the Grass, we see a very formalized uh, composition where each of the individual pieces are very much uh, constructed uh, and balanced out. When we look at the work by Manet, uh, here, it, it, it still has this very nice compositional aspects to it, but he's kind of changed uh, the conversation to even uh, th this very informal kind of view as if you yourself are, are kind of just... Uh, um, walking into the cafe. If you think about the early images of Victorine, where she's very much the center of the composition, uh, uh, the focus and everything, all the other aspects kind of generate around here. Here with the beer maid, uh, she's almost lost within the scene itself. Again, uh, depending on which version of the painting we're actually looking at, uh, uh, she very much becomes part of the scene. Uh, and again, this is a, a, a reinforced here in this image as well. Again, when we look at this uh, and we look at the individual members, we ask ourselves, uh, where is our focus? Again, where's our focal point? Is it the gentleman in, in uh, the top hat? Is it the woman directly behind him? Or uh, is it the woman uh, directly to his right? Or is it the entire scene altogether? Uh, when you look at this and you, you, you can almost feel the confusion and the noise in the room uh, by the, the, the way the composition is actually created, by the way uh, that we have this congestion and overlapping uh, and again the fluidity of the brush strokes very much lends itself to this kind of bringing everything together. Uh, we have a tiny little print here from the Dallas Museum of Art. Uh, again just a kind of a reflection of uh, daily life within Paris. I looked at this one uh, and it took me a while to kind of firmly establish what was going on. I thought for uh, a significant amount of time that this gentleman was actually sitting by himself. Uh, it wasn't until I saw a later image of it that you realize uh, if you look over by his shoulder, there's actually a second individual uh, that's essentially kind of fallen asleep uh, uh, at the table. Uh, again, if you think about, uh, this is kind of cartoonish. Uh, this is almost like a Daumier uh, uh, painting, if you will. There's another version where you can see this other person. And again, uh, this is as much a comment on, on on, uh, the daily existence in Paris. Again, we would have these people who would have uh, these lunch cafes and, and they would drink alcohol and uh, in some cases they wouldn't make it past lunchtime uh, after a nice nap through the day. But again, uh, really just to focus back uh, onto daily existence within Paris, uh, uh, not showing the, the lower class members like we were really seeing before, uh, in many cases kind of switching gears and showing some of the more predominant members uh, in these settings that we consider to be not necessarily lower class, but everyday settings, things like cafes, as we mentioned.
Edward Manet has one formal student in Eva Gonzalez, and uh, again, she's a very uh, interesting artist to kind of explore by her own right. Uh, when we look at how she's working, she, uh, along with Manet, is kind of on the fringes of what we think of as the Impressionist group. She never directly showed with the Impressionist, but uh, along with Manet at this time, when we look at their work and we, we, we kind of see uh, how things are occurring, uh, it is it is kind of proper to in some ways group them in uh, to the larger group. As mentioned, she is a formal student of Manet. Uh, she is, uh, to my knowledge, the only actual student. We have a couple people kind of coming and going, uh, but we do have this portrait of Eva Gonzalez uh, in here done by Manet, and, and the real irony, of course, is that uh, when we look at what she's painting, the painting that she's actually painting on uh, is another painting by Manet that's not even actually one of her paintings. Uh, but she does have some reasonable amount of success. Uh, again, when we look at the different types of work uh, that she actually does herself, uh, a lot of it is kind of this soft impressionism that I, I kind of uh, I think of centering around uh, aspects of reality, but then as we move farther and farther out, uh, we get more of this abstraction that we uh, associate with the Impressionist 